is the Glass Cannon Network. Did I scare you? Hi, I'm Jared Logan. Welcome to Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network, a show where we play Blades in the Dark, the incredible game by John Harper and Evil Hat. With me, as always, I have my uh, experienced crew of scoundrels, Josephine McAdam, Abu Salim, and Ross Bryant. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hey. Coming out hot, jump scaring us like that I right know. from the beginning. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, did I did I scare you? You actually did for me. You, yeah, I was, you got me. I was kind of in my own zone, you know? Yeah, maybe you thought something <clears throat> was wrong with me. Like I suddenly had painful gas or I was falling out of my chair. I'd be really worried if that's the sound you make when you have painful gas, bro. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You got to get that looked at, buddy. <laughs> he's not well. Folks, he's not well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so wait. Okay. So um, you know, this is a spooky show. It's a scary show. There's ghosts and ghoulies. There's we haven't seen any ghoulies yet, but I really <laughs> intend to put ghoulies in the show ghoulies. at some point. Maybe ghoulies and critters, and maybe munchies. <laughs> there, there could be munchies. There could be munchies. Um, so what I want to know is like, uh, what, what? If do you have a fear? What is your fear? This is my icebreaker question. Fear? What is fear? Okay. Do you have a fear of something? Yeah. I'll start. I'll start. So I, you don't think I'm trying to make you vulnerable without putting myself under the same scrutiny. Okay. I can't stand uh, spiders and bugs, and I make my wife get them out of the house. Wow. Yeah, okay. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of spiders. Uh, and, oh, by the way, the other night I got in my car and I was driving to a stand-up comedy show. And I was driving, and then while I was driving, this spider suddenly came down a web inside my car and was swinging near my face, and I crashed my car and I died. What? Hey. No. Okay. <laughs> that, that just that almost happened. Uh, instead, I like pulled over, like screech, and then I was like swatting at it to get it out the window, but it just fell on the floor, and uh. then I like. Then I couldn't find it, and I just drove, like, really, like, with my, if I can be frank, with my asshole really clenched <laughs> the entire time I was driving because I was so scared of the spiders. That's, like, that's so descriptive. It's yeah. Not like, you, you know what I mean? you it's get like, what so, I'm talking my about. my butt clenched or, like, you know, when I'm, like, you know, I was just really tense. It's like, no, my asshole was really <laughs> clenched. Precisely. Like, it's precisely. <laughs> right, exactly. You get it. Mm -hmm. um so all of that said what is your fear ross bryant what are you afraid of <laughs> the thing that springs to mind is like i will get really freaked out if i'm in a really big space and i have to go to sleep and i'm alone like turning my that back is so <laughs> specific like How turning, often turning has my, happened? like just imagine if you will you're in like you know like a like you know a big house and you, an unfamiliar house. Uh -huh. And all you're just fe hearing is it's settling. It's, it's, you know, all these fears come down to the unknown, you know? <laughs> it's sure. just like. Well, a spooky <laughs> house makes more sense than what you originally said, which is you were like a big space. I was like a gymnasium? Yeah. What are you, no, you in a warehouse? About? I mean, I you? am. I mean, I do have a lot of fears associated with gymnasiums and, <laughs> sure. and, and gyms and their, and their traumas, but more so that like. I go like if I'm in a hotel, like I won't, I don't want to sleep with my back to the door. And like, there's, there's, oh. there's so much behind you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does that like the, the feeling of something looming behind you? Like, okay. So you I don't think, like I to think, sleep in an unfamiliar place. Yeah. It would be, and though I've never had like the sleep paralysis thing that people describe where like there's mm. someone in the room with you or something like it is a fear to like roll over and there's just someone just like Ugh. looking. Wow! Yeah, so you're afraid to sl you're afraid of sleep. <laughs> yeah, you're like it. You're it's it's like you're in a Freddy Krueger movie. <laughs> That's a great film idea. Yeah. yeah, someone should make that movie. Yeah, uh, know, uh, copyright, copyright. I'll I'll get back to you all. <laughs> be, uh, having your heart rate go up right before you go to sleep is not a great combo. 
<laughs> no, no. Um, all right, uh, Josephine, what are you scared of? Boy, it's like at this point the list is so long. I'm trying to decide what to what to share. the The looming, you know, behind you feeling like I can't have someone going up at a quicker pace behind me up the stairs. <laughs> You guys have the weirdest <laughs> fears so, I've ever heard so, in my life. Yeah. Oh, man. Ross Next is like, I'm that's afraid of sleeping in an airplane hangar. Like, and Josephine's stairs. like, if, if I'm going upstairs, there better that's not it. be someone behind me. I'm no, no, be they can be behind me. Fear. That'd be great. They, they can be behind me. They just can't be going faster behind me and like catching up to me. You How know what I mean? How often does that happen? <laughs> I grew up with 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 an older brother. It I grew like- up on stairs. <laughs> that is so great. That is that is fantastic. That is so genius. It's so unnerving if someone's behind you and you hear it like you know, and they're like right behind you and like just oh, it's upsetting. Um, but that you know, roller coasters, uh, uh, deep ocean, dark waters. Cannot. Okay. Yeah, those make sense to me. Those make sense to me. The ocean can be really scary, um, especially if you get out on it and you can't see land. <clears throat> Roller coasters oh, yeah. are supposed to be scary, uh, but I, some I people need can't handle water. it. Clear waters. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not. I'm not comfortable. I mean, I'm scared of so much. I can't watch horror movies. I cannot like oh, do really? so many theme parks. I can't go to haunted houses. I can't watch documentaries about scary things. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, well, uh, uh, that I mean, I get the horror movies thing. I, <laughs> I watch tons of horror movies, and every time I'm watching one, I'm like, I get why people don't like this. As someone gets decapitated, I think that. next time I'm with any of you, we're going upstairs, and I'll be behind you. Now I'll, I'll I'll make you feel this fear. But and you ever like just turn around and be like, just stop. Yeah. Hey, slow down Just back there. Down. This is yeah. my Just greatest what, what fear. Are you, what are you, you're going to hurt yourself. Stop running. You know what I you're mean? You're activating like, that's, my that phobia. It's like such an easy mm-hmm. thing to stop. <laughs> it's like, whereas like a roller coaster, you can't stop. <laughs> it's like, well, a roller coaster, you do get on voluntarily. So right. it feels easy to avoid that one, too. Yeah. My yeah, well, I mean, I, I do stop. I do. You do. You turn around. But if it's like an annoying older brother, then, you know. Yeah. It's not much avail. Greek Abu. word for fear of someone behind you on the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> yeah. Abu, uh, what's your fear? And based on the fears from my first two players, I assume it's something very specific, like the shingles off of a Victorian house or. Yeah, well, look, I, uh, I actually. I actually. Door stoppers that are brown. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, I wasn't afraid of anything until I met my daughter. Aww. Oh, Yeah. Now I'm yeah. afraid of everything. Yes. I'm like literally I'm just, tired. you know, even even zips. I'm like, oh my god, is this is this going to zip you? I'm so sorry. And like you know, it's like it's I just, 100% get you that. You get it? And like even when she's breathing next to me, I'm just like, I can't because baby's breathing. Like no one tells you this. No one says that baby breathing is like erratic, where it's like, <laughs> and then suddenly it like stops, and you're like. Oh my god! <laughs> you just hit them panicking. Like I've got like literally like voice recordings and videos like where I've in the night kind of worked myself up, just thinking I've got to record this. I'm going to tell the doctor. How dare they give us the baby like this? Like, this is like in proper preparation of being like, how how could you how could you discharge us like this? Like anyway, yeah, I know they just give, give it to this? you. They're like, have yeah, fun, bye, like, good luck. <laughs> um. You know, I, I have the same thing and uh, my daughter, you know, she's three, so she can like just get out of the car, you know, and we'll get out of the car somewhere and I won't be able to see her, but it's not like I c- can't see her for a minute. It's like, I can't see her for five seconds. And I'm like, oh, Rosie, where are you? And she's like, <laughs> right here. I literally stepped one step. <laughs> oh so man, I'm it. like, I've never, I've never felt such aggression when I have her strapped to me in the front, like I've got this carrier on me and then I'm walking through like a massive shopping center, like mall. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm ready to literally just gut people. Like yeah. if they just enter my vicinity, I'm just like, bro, can't you see? I've got, I've got like 
cargo here. Even though she could probably take on more than I could. She could probably bounce. <laughs> but the point is, it's like the bounce. idea of like anyone entering the space. I'm like, back off. Yeah. yeah. Now just imagine you if there was I mean? someone coming up from behind you. Oh, oh man. And that's, also, that's a massive shopping center, so Ross Bryant would not be able to go to sleep I can't there. go to sleep there. So, <laughs> by the way, it's Josephine, I think guys. what you've got is called bathmo-diocophobia. What? Bathmo-diocophobia? Is this a real thing? Word for the fear of being chased is diocophobia. The fear of steps is bathmophobia. So I guess the fear of being chased up the steps would be diocophobia. Wow. Well, thanks, Ross. A thousand years ago, this was a (laughs) land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall. uh, Actually, the Imperial City is a massive city on the coast of Akaros. It It has walls that are high around it and an artificial sun. And it is ruled with an iron fist by the immortal emperor. Oh. The, uh, the sun is gone, but a sorcerous sun has been created. Can our players survive the Imperial City? Furthermore, can their characters survive the Imperial City? <laughs> Was improvising this prologue a good idea? <laughs> the only thing yes. that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. At least I finished it the way I normally do. Welcome to the show, everybody. Um <laughs> If you are disappointed that I didn't do the normal prologue, go back and listen to an earlier episode. Today, we're not in Duskfall, so it wouldn't have been appropriate. Today, we have traveled outside of the lands we know. In our last episode with this crew, we just had a a brief Chuck-related tangent, and now we're back to the remnant. In our last episode with this crew, they pulled themselves back from the brink. They they disassociated themselves with the builder, an evil chthonic, well, maybe not evil, a chthonic entity. (laughs) What's your definition of evil? Right. Right. Uh, They disassociated (laughs) themselves. They broke off with the builder, but in doing so, they lost Selyak Khan. Selyak Khan has left the remnant. Mm. And so the remnant is left with Juliet, uh, Belle Rose, Valkos, and... Ekaprag Wodi, who is currently uh, permanently possessed by the spirit of Juliet's lover, her deceased lover, Ophelia. Ekaprag Wodi uh, has gone through some changes because of this possession. He is now one of the living dead. And uh, last uh, uh, episode, last downtime rather, uh, having had a disastrous score at the Childermass Estate in Whitestone, uh, White Crown rather, you uh, you decided to uh, collect your payment for it and found out that the person that hired you had fled the city. Fitz, a collector, your crew's contact, had taken uh, all of his of his coin and gotten on a train and traveled to the Imperial City, the seat of power for the immortal emperor who rules the entire empire, and you decided to follow him. Ekaprag Wodi helped you to forge, or actually not forge, but get your hands on some documents and passports. You boarded a train, and you headed off into the Deadlands, outside of the electroplasmic lightning barriers. And so, um, you are going to uh, try to find Fitz in the Imperial City and force him to pay up the six coin that he owes you. And I just want to warn the players of one more thing. I'm going to be a bit more of a stickler for tier and effect rules uh, going forward, or at least definitely during this score, because the Imperial City... Well, it's locked up a lot tighter. Your characters would know this. It's locked up a lot tighter than Duskfall. There's a lot less crime. There are much fewer scoundrels in the Imperial City because it is the headquarters and the hub of the Imperial military who are extremely highly trained and very well armed and they are everywhere. So you are heading into a very fancy gilded police state. Oh, great. 
So I'll allow your characters, you're on the train. I'll allow you to converse a bit. And when you're ready, we can head into the planning stage for the score. And this score might work a little differently than other scores because most scores, they work, you know, they're very immediate. Like, you know, you're standing outside the building, you've got to get something out of the building. But right. in this score, there's an entire city and there's a person inside of it whom you must find and force to give you the money he owes you. So this is a score that may take place in a longer time frame, maybe over the course of several days. So when you are ready, let me know when you're, we should start planning the score or I'll interrupt you when it sounds like you're already planning the score. <laughs> let me just set the tone again, the, the, the scene, uh, the, the, the train has been moving for over 24 hours. And because you only got coach berths, you just have to sleep on a hard wooden bench. Uh, and outside the window, um, you've already passed White Hollow, which is one of the large cities in uh, Duskfall. And now you're on the final leg toward the Imperial City. And outside, everything is in sort of a, a, a constant state of twilight. And you can see uh, occasionally the ruined uh, buildings that um, are now nothing but like stones covered in like weird yellow poisonous grass. Uh, they no longer are like full structures because they've been crumbling for th a thousand years. Um, but occasionally you go by something that looks a little bit like Stonehenge, the remains of an old <clears throat> castle or uh, the foundations of an old village. Um, and you are crowded in. A lot of people got on at White Hollow. So you're crowded onto these benches and there are people sleeping. Uh, many of them look like they are merchants or uh, people that have uh, economic commercial business in the Imperial City. And you can let me know what you'd like to do. Go ahead. Does Ekaprag sleep? This is what I was just about to say that like, while, while some are sleeping, um, and may maybe if you wake up, especially Juliet Belrose, if you kind of nod off and come to, you see like Ekaprag just watching you with sleepless eyes and occasionally looking out into the, into the darkness as though perceiving things that, that you cannot perceive out there in the in the dark. Well, this has had one effect. I think that um, people are avoiding Ekaprag, and they probably don't know that he is a supernatural creature, but they do know that he is weird, and they are afraid of uh, okay. maybe sitting beside someone who is uh, <clears throat> mentally unwell on the train. And so Ekaprag's bench is uh, empty except for one guy who's snoring loudly, leaning on like the far end of the bench. Are we facing inwards like subway You're style yeah, or are we facing ex No, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes, of course. Uh, the benches face each other. So Ekaprag's bench is facing the bench where uh, Juliet and Valkos are sitting. Mm. Kind of just staring at Ekaprag. Would I know that he is a supernatural being? Yes, because if you recall, last time Valkos was in action, yes. he told Saw uh, Sawtooth to look yes. into yes, Ekaprag's condition. Yes, I did. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. In secret, right? Valkos didn't tell anyone. Mm, well, mm, right. apart from the fact that probably vampires have super hearing. Because sh sh yeah, we don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean... There's lots of things on Ekaprag's sheet, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, Valkos can't look at the character sheet, can't look <clears> at the playbook. Um. I kind of Ophelia. Look. Go on. And, um, yeah, like, the, you'll see kind of like a change on the, on the face kind of softens a little as it looks to you. We've never left Akaros before. Or we've never left Duskfall before. It's, uh, <clears throat> exciting, no? Yes. Yes, there's a thrill in that, isn't there?
Juliet will get up and she crosses over and sits next to Ekaprag. <clears throat> it's nice to be able to go on an, what feels like an adventure together again. Oh, I agree, darling. And, uh, and Ekaprag takes your hand. I've seen things that you haven't seen, but now, now we get to travel together. Yes, well, perhaps we can both expand our horizons a little bit. And grow beyond what we once were. Yes. There is growth coming. I've learned that um, as much as you want to stay fixed, change is inevitable. I but, agree. And those with the will to change their circumstance can clamber thy way up. We're going to rise, you and I. Yes. We're going to have our justice. People change in all manners of ways, it's true. I just get up and start walking away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, uh, can you hear it out there? Between the cities. What do you hear? When you're in Duskfall, there's so much noise. So many people talking and thinking. Their machines grinding and spinning, belching their smoke. And out there, a silence, Juliet. It's like music. You can almost hear them singing. I, I won't pretend to be able to hear the way that you seem to, but uh, it's interesting to see these changes you are going through. <clears throat> and Juliet takes this opportunity to sort of slip her hand away as if she's like scratching at something or whatever and then keeps it on her it's, own lap. It's not merely a change. Fools allow themselves to be changed, blown about by the winds of fate. This is an improvement. Not change merely. Fools change, but the wise have the will to grow and to prosper. And that is what we shall do, my love. You've always been so wise. Let me check on Valkos, and perhaps we can prepare for what's coming. In yes. You check area. on Valkos. Wouldn't want our big strong man to be getting into any mischief, would we? <laughs> she just walks away. Valkos, um, if you were to look out the window, you would notice that in the direction the train is moving, there is light on the horizon. Uh, it's very slowly growing, it's very dim, but as the train keeps moving, there is a, a sort of, it almost looks like 
um, if Valkos even knew this, uh, the player understands. It almost looks maybe like a sunrise um, a, <laughs> as you approach it, uh, but it's 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 not quite uh, yellow or w- uh, white light. It's like uh, more blue in hue um, as you uh, as you get closer and closer to the Imperial City. The sky gets brighter, and perhaps you have the thought that it's uh, you'll be there soon. And then, what is your move? What is your plan I think I'm Juliet sort of, approaches you, know, you sort of in my own thoughts Valgos are you alright? yeah fine <sighs> just um look I know that you care for Ophelia, but that is not Ophelia. I know. I'm... I know, I know. Trust me. I do. I feel like we're approaching soon. Yes. Um, do you know the city? You are not from Duskfall. Do you? <laughs> I hate cities. How will I know the city? But we'll find someone who does. Yes. Uh, use whatever coin we can and Try to find fits and get our money. I guess we we don't want to spend more than what we came here for. No. Besides, anything that we do spend, I'm sure fits will pay us back in kind. (laughs) Right. So find someone, a guide perhaps, and then we can... Just follow this trail... So, uh, it sounds like you're going to try to find a guide. Would you say that you are planning the score now? Or do you want to just... I mean, look, you don't have to plan yet, I guess, if yeah. you want to just kind of yeah. land on the uh, I wasn't land able to f- the Imperial City. and Go ahead. There wasn't in, any information that was given to me by um, by uh, Sawtooth, right? Uh, before we left. Uh, no, he was just, he was just telling you that uh, Fitz fled and uh, took the money with him. And I believe it's six coin that's uh, owed to you, which is uh, not a small purse. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, but I mean, Sawtooth hasn't told me anything about echiphilia. Mm. Oh, no, not not before you left. No. Okay, cool. Cool. Great. Um, uh, yeah, I think then, yeah, I think then ultimately, if we know that we need six gold and that he fled, I think then ultimately, yeah, we're going to, I think it would be good to, to start asking people. I think, uh, yeah, we're- yeah. Where are we arriving? Do we know where we're st- Oh, you'll be in? arriving in the Imperial City's uh, main station, which is uh, which you will know is guarded on all sides by the Ministry of Preservation, and uh, mm-hmm. that will have a customs check to check your documents and to make sure that you have business inside of the Imperial City. And if you're worried about that, perhaps now would be a good time to go ahead and plan the score. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Our documents check, right, guys? Yeah. We we got documents, yeah? You got mm-hmm. documents. You first rolled and got tier zero documents. Then you rolled again and rolled a four or five, which means you got documents equal to your tier, meaning that you are currently holding tier one documents. And I would characterize those as uh, not not fake, not forged, but also not high access, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you are in like the low, the lowest uh, tier of people that can travel on the trains. Um, so, as you approach the city, 
I think perhaps it is time to plan the score. This is a score right. that may take place over several days. It may take place over a week. Uh, but I think it, it, the whole score is searching this city for the guy that owes you money. Right. So yeah. I'm going to ask you, what is your uh, type of plan? Is it going to be an assault on the city? Some sort of deception <laughs> that gets you around the city? Stealth? Uh, keeping a low profile? Keeping out of uh, the eye? Occult? Are you going to use some occult method to find fits? Social? Or are you going to... It sounds like you were already maybe talking about a social, getting in touch with someone to use as a guide, mm -hmm. or transport. Um, and uh, transport is interesting. I'm not sure how it would apply, but if you can figure out a way, you can certainly try it. I'm between stealth or social. Yeah, I think right. maybe. Right. Last time you did a social score, it worked out really yeah. well. It seems, but this seems maybe more apropos to that. Um, seems like the hardest part of this, maybe, is just finding him. Once yeah. we got him, then, right. then we then then he's in our power. But um, but if he's just on the loose in this big military, yeah, we're city, gonna have to make some friends. Yeah, and we know so little about him. Like what what he what he likes, who his relationships are, what he's here to do. Surely we'd um, know quite a well, bit he's, about him. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, our, our contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would I would like to know what we do know about him. <laughs> yeah, that would be, I guess yeah, that's that was my way question. of asking that. Um, yeah. So Fitz is a collector. Mm. He is um, uh, what I would call a middle-class citizen of Dustfall, only because he's not born into the nobility. He is a uh, kind of merchant level. He's wealthy, very wealthy. But he is not, he's never been really accepted into the ranks of the nobility. Uh, and that is why he was desperate to humiliate the Childermass woman. He, um, he, he's a social uh, climber. Yes. He's also, uh, he's also uh, willing to do whatever it takes to get his hands on certain artifacts and items including hiring, say, a crew of shadows to take them for him. And so he's he's very greedy and avaricious in that way. He he wants certain things and he'll stop at nothing to get them. That's good to Who know. Who does he know in the Imperial City? Where has he gone? That is the scope of the score. I think then we come in and knowing this, we pose the idea that we're looking to give away something of incredible value and mm. pass that across the ranks around the city try and spread the news of that so that's deception it poses yeah, dealers it's, it's, for it's, us ooh, yeah i think it's interesting. Some, something that he might want Rem remember we also know that because sawtooth conveyed that there was a hawker that supplies fits with psych drugs so i don't know if fits needs yeah. psych drugs as well he's a He's got a That's habit. A good idea. Right. Because that might be a trail to also follow. Great. So I think, I do think it's deception. I do yeah. think it's yeah. like a, it's like a, it's like a stealth deception hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can put around that we're, we have, we have products to move that he might be interested in. Yeah. See if we great. Can set up a buy. That is a great deception. Um, I think that it actually it, it let let's 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 and the detail uh, deception and the detail is there. You are going to act like you have an item. Would you like to tell me what the item is or have some sort of description of it? It's going to need to be a little specific, won't it, to mm -hmm. uh, draw him out? So, so what is, is this? The the artifact item that we're trying to draw. Him? Okay. Mm -hmm. So something we're you trying don't to need to have it. You just need to have what you're telling people. Mm -hmm. Right. Could we say or, that it's a it's an object of almost of of it, it holds incredible mysterious power, uh, which allow which can both curse as well as uh, as well as sort of bless the uh, the people. Maybe it could be something from you know like a Severosi artifact, which uh, I have found and it's essentially like this i don't know this 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 thing which bestows great power upon people but also curses them if you know 
used incorrectly. But it's an I, interesting. I, if I understand you right, it it can uh, give blessings and curses. It, it, yes. It, uh, it can hex. Yes. Uh, people. What what kind of object is it? Do you think? I think it's a, it. it's a, because it's Severosi. I would say it's. Could I could I have found maybe a, a rat, in uh, in the Imperial City uh, during you know and, and sort of diced like cut its head off, and then sort of tied its tail across its uh, in you know through the eyes, and essentially it's this kind of rat skull, which well um, well yeah. let's see you're not in the Imperial City yet you're still on the train okay but. Uh, you, um, why don't we talk about loadout before we get the final details of the score and you tell <laughs> me if there's something, if you want to check something off in your loadout that says okay. that you had like a rat carcass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I believe there are, uh, parts in your loadout that Would allow it, you to. Could it be uh, a spirit bane charm? I like that a lot. I think that that yeah. makes ex total sense. So it's a it's, um, a, it's a rare Severosi spirit bane charm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. blessing and unique. Essence. Super is unique. What we're saying it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're saying, but it's mm. actually probably a normal spirit bane charm because you have one of those. Mm. What is your loadout going to be, Valkos? Mine is normal. Normal. What is your loadout going to be, uh, Juliet Belrose? Uh, I'll go light. And what is your loadout going to be, Ekaprag Wody? See, here's the thing: we're starting this on a train, so we're all we've all got luggage. Oh, um, that's true. I uh, right? I'm so. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So if you want heavy, I'll allow it to be in the luggage to be. Yeah, we 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 can pass with a huge trunk, and I'm, I think I'm uh, swapping normal. Yeah. I'm, go, I'm swapping a normal. I'll go. I'm gonna heavy, go heavy. <laughs> Why not? Um, but the the issue is, I guess that I don't know. Actually, no, we're going to go through customs. I'm going normal, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing normal. I'm going okay, heavy. great. Why and not? so now uh, we have we have a deception. We have we have what the deception's detail is. We have everyone's loadout. And now we can do the engagement roll. So oh is this operation bold or daring? Yes. Oh, well, first of all, you get one die for free. Is the operation bold or daring? Yes, because the Imperial City is a foreboding and dangerous place for scoundrels to commit crimes and try to sell things on the black market. As as your characters would know, it is a military state in, in many ways. And uh, now, uh, does, uh, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target? I think it does. I think that you guys thought of a way to kind of interest and deceive the target in a way that he would be um, kind of more easily duped. So I'm gonna give you a, a point for that. Now, uh, is the operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? No. Uh, do they have particular defenses or special preparations? They do, they do. Um, and um, are, are any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? No. Can friends or contacts provide aid or insight? No. So you have two dice here. <laughs> and this is the engagement roll. If you get a six, you've already passed the hardest, or not the hardest, but the first challenge that would happen during the score. If you get a four or five, you're in a risky position and uh, you are not in a dire position, but you, you, uh, you are faced with some sort of first challenge that you can't skip over. And if you get a one to three, you're in a desperate position to start. God, don't you love this game? <laughs> I'm gonna roll. Here we go. I rolled a one and a four. You are in a risky position okay. to start. So I will let you know that um, as you were uh, as you were traveling uh, right before you got into Imperial City Station. By the way, the 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 light has become very bright. In fact. It is almost full day outside and you've never seen that before and you're not quite sure. Well, you may have heard that. Well, I'll reveal it to you in a moment, but uh, while you're on the train, uh, a group of men and women 
dressed in like gas masks and like um, uniforms, uh, like uh, dungarees and like work uniforms, carrying lightning hooks and like weird like uh, meters, like they go like a Geiger counter in their hands. They kind of walk by uh, your bench. Uh, and uh, one of them pauses for a second. It looks at uh, their spectrometer and uh, and it starts clicking like more rapidly as they sort of pointed over at Ekaprag for a moment. Oh, shit. But <laughs> then one of this person's colleagues goes, come on, we're needed outside. And uh, they all move on. So that was a group of railjacks and railjacks are responsible uh. For protecting the trains from ghosts, spirits, and supernatural beings that thrive out in the Deathlands. That is the first challenge that you have passed without any problems. Now you arrive and you begin to disembark and you see where all the light is coming from. Up in the sky, over a spire that is, uh, there's a spire, a tower that is so high that you can see it over the walls of the train station. Balanced, poised, right at the tip of that spire is a small star, a sun. It is so bright that when you look up at it, you're blinded. It and, it and it's burning your skin because what you realize is that looking around this train station, there are some people, perhaps natives of the Imperial City, who have pink complexions or deep brown complexions. And you realize that as citizens of Duskfall, you guys are pale and corpse-like, especially Ekaprag, mm -hmm. because and, you've and never this... actually been Yes, go ahead, Ekaprag. And as Ekaprag like like sees this, like it is like you're you're it's the full like like oh. it's disquieting, and you can see that Ekaprag is noticeably uncomfortable by the presence of this light, and is like can barely stand to be in the in its rays. Yes, and uh, you know that it is artif artificial. Mm -hmm. You know that it was created by the immortal emperor to light his city. Uh, and now uh, everyone around you is moving toward customs. Let me tell you a little bit about the train station. The train station is a cage. The walls are high and made of metal. You notice that there are members of the imperial military guarding the two exits out of the train station. One to the right, one straight ahead. The one straight ahead is for high class citizens who have better documents than you. The one to the right has a giant crowd of people. They're in line after line after line. You know that line at the airport that's like a maze? Oh my God. They're mm -hmm. all in line for it and there's easily, there's easily 500 people. It's ridiculous. At the top of these metal walls that cage you in, there are sizzling electroplasmic fences that crackle with energy, keeping out the spirits outside of the train station, but also hemming in anybody that would try to climb out. And at every exit, the doors have complex uh, locks with like valves and pistons and all this machinery and a uh, special like pipe is needed to be inserted to open them up. And you notice that the Imperial military members are waiting until someone is cleared by customs and it receives a green uh, like uh, flag that is pinned onto their, their uh, shirt or their tunic. And then the Imperial military opens the doors and lets that person out into the Imperial city. And let me tell you about the Imperial military. They carry, <laughs> they, they're they heavily armored. They are wearing segmented armor. They look like lobsters coated in metal. And each of them carries a halberd, a huge long handled ax, but at the top of that halberd is a gun barrel, <laughs> like a small Damn. cannon 
mounted on the end of their halberd. That is the situation you have just walked into. What do you do? And then I'll tell you what the threat is. Sure. Jesus. Um. We thought we were playing on hard mode. I know, right? We didn't realize. Ekaprag is like <laughs> taking a taking a big hat out of the trunk and it's like very like vampire <laughs> hunter D like huge brim and just and so that he can continue to be in in a yeah. shadow and um, and uh, uh, Juliet hands Ekaprag some like tinkering goggles. I'm sure sh she's got to have stuff that you know protects against um, Spark, you know when you're and, and right electroplasm. Yeah, and hands great. those to Ekaprag. So yeah, just like it's it's yeah just. The stained gl blue glass of, of these things kind of goes over his eyes, and I mean, we get in get in line, I guess, yeah, yeah, and hope these documents work their work their magic. What's your, and as we're at the back of the line, sort of together, what do we say is our business? Are we Pleasure. separate or together? We can be together. We're on holiday. I, I don't think we're allowed on holiday. I mean, there are people, the and you would know that there are people that receive passes to come here on pilgrimage. I mean, it is the home of the immortal emperor. Mm. So people come to pay homage and to um, see the sights of the imperial city, which are... Amazing. I mean, people come to see this sorceress son that the emperor created. By the way, he only created it a couple years ago. And you all know that that spire, that uh, that's called the astral spire. And the immortal emperor sacrificed everyone inside of it. The entire spire and everyone in it turned to stone when he created that son. Uh, oh. <laughs> cool. That's... <laughs> He's a real he good, good guy. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, maybe um, religious pilgrimage is the is the is the cover story, since if we posed as the merchants, I'm sure there's probably like official mercantile exchanges they'd want us to participate in. But we're we're doing illicit trading. Right? I think I think I might need to if they're gonna check our bags, I might need to pose as a spark ride or something, checking the towers. You know, here for. I mean. I don't think anything I'm carrying would make sense for a pilgrimage. Okay. If they end up, you know, like going through bags and sure. I don't know how thorough this is. Is there a Where bathroom? Where are you having this conversation? The, in line? Quietly at the end of the line. <laughs> I mean, you're having hopefully. it quietly at the end of the line? Very, very quietly. Okay. Here's the first threat. You notice a gentleman, two or three people ahead of you, and you notice that he's looking back and he's heard some of the things you just said and then his eyes go wide and he turns back and faces the front. He's going to possibly inform on you. He knows that you are planning something. He's heard your conversation. We should pose as this. We should pose as that. <laughs> great. You know what's great? I'd be like, I'm going to look at everyone and be like, and you've hidden the bomb within the suitcase, yes? When when you say that, when you say that, he doesn't turn all the way around where you can see his eyes. You just see his head go. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I kind of, as I do, like I do, as I, like I do this, I'm like, and you, and you have hidden the bomb in the suitcase, yes, as a way of being like, are you seeing this? Only Valkos would go, uh-oh, there's someone about to inform yeah, us. Yeah, Let's let me... make him think there's a bomb. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I'll say... I, I see what he's doing. He's going to make this guy look crazy when, when uh, if he does inform on us. Um, ah, and I so, didn't even so I'm like, see that. Yes, of course. Um, so, well, yeah. I think yes, that... Yes, of course. Um, death. <laughs> death to the Imperium. <laughs> long, <laughs> long live Scovland, brother. <laughs> I uh, yes, I will uh, go deposit the suitcase now. Is there like a? I, this may be over. So, is there like a restroom or some like in the station? Um, 
uh, I think that uh, in this uh, kind of uh, steerage section, there is no restroom. There is no restroom. Oh, there is uh, there's just like um, a horrible corner. A horrible corner. Okay, well, yes, a horrible <laughs> corner. I'll, I'll um grab you know rustle for a, a bag or something or some you know that we have empty it real quick you know. Or just put something, some clothing, just stuff it. And uh, we'll walk it over but before to you this do, I'm gonna oh, yeah. Before you do, I grab you and I'm like, no. We must sacrifice ourselves and the people around us for this. It is cowardly if we let it go away. If we don't, if we're not by the area. Think of all the lives all the spirits that will form into the one being that we desire to be. Keep hold of it. Right. Does he believe you? Love it. Does he believe you? What action are you using to convince him that there's definitely a bomb? Uh, Sway, right? This This would be a sway, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it'd be a sway. Or, Who's gonna or, roll it? Uh, well, <laughs> who who has sway? Wait, I, I have I do, sway. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, why do I? Ha- I didn't know I had sway. Wait, what? What are your? What do you have? I'm. Oh yeah, uh, you're Ekaprag. That's right. I'm Ekaprag, baby. I got two pips. Two cool. Pips. Yeah. Uh, can I assist you? People, uh, it sounds like everybody was assisting. We were. Yeah. Yeah, we were all contributing. If, so, uh, yeah. if if you don't mind, I would love I, because it seems like everybody did assist. Yeah. Mm. I think everybody should, uh, except for Ekaprag, should take a stress, okay. and then stre- you'll get okay. that many extra die. Great, Ekaprag. So this is risky or standard effect, hopefully. Yeah, we'll go risky for standard effect. And do I get a bonus dice for each? You get of my two. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Oh, okay, here we go. Um. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah. The high, uh, I rolled a three, a five, a five, and a five. <laughs> okay. Success with a consequence. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Um, suddenly, the man leaves the line, and you see him beelining directly for a member of the Imperial military. And you see him animatedly talking to them. Uh, and then they approach you in line. Hmm? And a man behind like a bronze, it's not a full mask, but it's like it covers, you know, it's like a mouth guard uh, in like a helmet and in the segmented armor goes, and he has, uh, he has, let's see how many guys he brings over with him. Okay, there's a lot of them. He brings his full, he brings his full pack of of guards with him. So there's five of them all together. And uh, they say, you, and they point at uh, you three. They pointed all of you. Open your bags. Is there a problem, sir? Uh, and uh, they um, uh, they suddenly bring their halberds down near you, uh, Valkos, and it looks like they're about to smash you with them, and they go, open your bags now. No, no, there's no need for that. And, uh, and I think we've established it. Ekphelia sort of can kind of like class wise code switch into either um like the sort of um yeah yeah ekoprag demeanor or the ophelia demeanor so ophelizing themselves is like there's no need for that and uh begins to unlock the latches on the box of course we're more than willing to cooperate officers can i, I understand your duty is very important employ a flashback that is a good idea. And we're going to find out what that flashback is <laughs> when we come back from our short break. We're going to take a brief word for our sponsors as the case perhaps opens and the soldiers look in. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're back and we are in the train station in Imperial City where Valkos has just created a bomb threat. <laughs> <laughs> the Imperial military are about to look into the bags, the luggage of our scoundrels. 
and Juliette Bell Rose has just called <clears throat> for a flashback. So as the Imperial Guard lifts open your case, Juliette Bell Rose, um, you know, uh, un- unclasps it and, and uh, lifts it open. What is your flashback? A flashback to months, months, and months ago. Right after she was first, like, excommunicated from the Sparkrites and had everything taken. One of the first things she did was to make sure that she would have forged copies of her of her uh, credentials of the Sparkrite, like, uh symbol the the whatever you know i'm sure there's got to be some sort of badge or pin or that signifies the spark right status <clears throat> and so th- that's something that new has to happen i'd like to combine that with the fact that we uh posed as spark rights and got those uniforms from <laughs> the uh the spark right engineers when unifaros was doing her Demonstration. Oh, you're bringing back other scores. Nice. Oh, stuff yeah. You had, stuff you had in other scores, you still have it? Uh, the uniform of the Spark Absolutely. Ray uniform? That's not something we throw out. That's. Yeah, man, that was useful. Mm-hmm. That's so useful. Yeah. All right. Please mark off documents on your inventory. Okay. Which I see you have. And these documents are not the papers of transit that you are right. using to get into the Imperial City. These are documents that show that you. Uh, uh, you are an official Spark Rights Guild member. Yes. And then, in addition to that, I'm trying to see if there's anything that can cover the uh, the outfits. Do you want to just do subterfuge supplies? Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> in your in your, did you go heavy in the end, or did you go normal? I went normal. I went normal. Normal. So, how okay. many are have been? Uh, you only two. get five. So you've yeah, two used out of two. Five. Okay. Um, so, um, is is that the end of the flashback that you've packed those things? Yes, the the uniforms at the top, the papers are at the top, like of the bag, and just to prepare for you know whatever explosives may actually be in Juliet's bags. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you are accounting for the equipment that's in your bag. Yeah, I mean she has a lot of pretty suspicious items in general. The guards rifle through your bag and uh, they take out equipment and they sort of toss it onto the uh, concrete ground and they pull out all of your uh, things uh, and you notice that one of them looks closely at the uh, spark rates uniform and at the spark rates badge that you have packed and uh, they uh, look at each other and confer quietly then they throw uh, your badge and outfit onto the floor and they turn to Ekaprag Bag open, please. Of course. I'm. Wait, Jared, how much stress should I take for that? Thank you. One stress. Okay, so we're gonna have to get get around all these searches. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought uh, Josephine might have a oh, flashback sorry. that would cover all three sorry. of you, and she's like, <laughs> I got myself covered. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I don't think. Look, if we're talking about explosives and the fact that she has grenades in her... I just thought mine was the most suspicious. You, mm. you might just have normal things in yours. It could be. The thing is, I don't know what I have until they become useful later. So, <laughs> um, But I, I love this. I, so I'll call for a flashback also. Okay. So, um, of course, of course, officers. Only too happy to oblige. And as I open the, uh, um, the box... Let's go. Let's see the um, the dark garret apartment of Eka Prag Wody <laughs> with little little puppets dangling from the wall and like <laughs> contact juggling balls on a table and like um, and like one of those pull up bars like on the on the ceiling and you just see this trunk also in the middle of the floor, yeah, and then see it open up and Eka Prag come out of it, like kind of contorting himself out of it and opening little hatches and this box is not just a trunk it's part of his act and much like a like we've said that he's he's you know he's a he's a carnival sort he works in a like a weird grand theater so this is the kind of thing where you'd like shut someone you could 
cut it in half, disappear them, uh, make <laughs> make things appear and reappear. There's false bottoms and little hatches. And so in the privacy of of his space, practicing the 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 sliding mechanisms that that conceal what uh, uh, they do not want you to see and misdirect your attention um, towards uh, the things he does. And all of your useful items, I assume, are squirreled away in some sort of false compartment. Correct. And all you would see is a very, very nice wardrobe. Very good. (laughs) Um, Go ahead and mark off subterfuge supplies on your loadout, and please also take one stress. All right. They rifle through your fine clothes, uh, your cloak, all of those things. They throw them out, toss them willy-nilly, mm. uh, and then they go, he's clear. Or, I'm sorry, they're clear. Well, th- these guys aren't polite. <laughs> he's yeah. clear. Uh, and then they uh, then they uh, look to Valkos. And I literally just pull a bag. I open it, tip it out, and it's literally just pants. And <laughs> Like a t-shirt. And I'm like... How can that be true, Valkos, when you have gone for a normal loadout? Because the bag is big enough to be a normal loadout. You see, I travel empty, my friend. And I find the items that I can in the city. Right? (laughs) Why would I want to find items and take them through with me? Are you telling me that you have brought no items? So the yeah. idea is that I'm even when it comes to weapons or guns, if there is no, if I can't find them, then I'm not going to have them. But there is nothing literally in this bag. So for your normal loadout, you are only <laughs> going to use things that would not be caught by a customs agent or uh, someone checking your bag. Is that correct? I mean, yeah. I mean, like, the, I'd say unless the only you thing, find something later, you could find something in the city, right? I'd say the only thing that they might find in my bag or in my person would be the spirit bane charm, which I have attached to my neck, which is like mm. a necklace, and the uh, rage essence vial, and that's essentially, you know, something that I might have, you know, shoved up my bum or something. So uh, Valkos uh, isn't even going. <laughs> Valkos isn't even going to use uh, any kind of flashback or subterfuge. Right. Valkos is just going to show them what's in his bag, and they uh, grab the bag off of you. Your T-shirt and your pants or whatever have fallen out of it, and they <laughs> dig through it and they find the Rage Essence file, and they say, "You're not permitted to take this into the city." Fine. Do you understand? Yes. I mean, I have to. And I kind of look at the halberd that they have. (laughs) And I'm like, that's understandable. And I'm sorry if I offended, but I don't understand why we are being searched. And and I pull him aside. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you Why are you bringing narcotics into the city? Do you intend to sell these narcotics in the city? No, sir. In fact, I intend to probably use them myself, if you want honesty. He throws it on the ground, and he stomps on it, and the Rage Essence vial leaks onto the concrete, and you must now mark it off of your inventory sheet. Great. It's gone. Mm-hmm. I kind of look at him, and I kind of, um, <laughs> with my eyes, I'm like, Give me one reason why I shouldn't take you to detention right now, Severosi. A reason. You have five seconds to answer. Because I am simply here to enjoy the sights. Okay. He doesn't look like he's going to believe you. Um, I can. You, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, um, the sights provided by the beneficence of our glorious emperor. I think it's important that all of our um, fringe citizens accommodate themselves to our customs and our faith. Um, and that is why uh, um, those of us of a evangelical temperament have brought them here to 
behold his son. Perhaps you wince a little bit when you look mm-hmm. up at it for I a look second. At me like, <gasps> but I'm going to need an action because the Sweet. threat is if you do not succeed yeah. in this action, they are going to apprehend Valkos right now and take Valkos mm-hmm, to a mm-hmm, detention mm-hmm. area. Or at least they're going to try. Valkos might make that hard for them. Great. So, Here we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait, this is risky. Wait, who's, who's doing the action here? Who is well, doing the action? I think, I think it's Zach Prag. I think it's Eka Prag because yeah. he's the guy who came in with the story. I was ready to to attempt something bad, so thank you <laughs> oh, so much. Can, can I assist then in a way? Um, let's see. Uh, you can you can assist if you'd like. I think you should. What are you? How are you going to assist? I'll lean into the uh, one of the guards and say, "They are my travel companions," and. The uh, addiction of this one is perhaps due to some experimentations that I've employed in the past. You know the uh, methods we must use for science. Okay. Uh, he listens to you, and his you can see his eyes narrow above his uh, face mask. And uh, you may pay a stress, okay. and you may give an extra die to our friend Ekphelia. Mm-hmm. And Ekphelia, you uh, can roll Sway. And I think because this is a deception, you are on a deception-based score, that I'm not going to make these soldiers' tier come into play now, They're, but their tier will come into play if you decide to fight them, and that's not good. <sighs> uh, so I'm going to add that dice. Thank you for more story. Here we go. That's a five. Five. Success with a consequence. Mm -hmm. What is the consequence? (laughs) The consequence is that the soldier confers with his colleague. They pull out a yellow ribbon. Oh, shit. And they uh, are attaching it to Valkos' shoulder. uh, And they uh, also pull out like a strange apparatus that looks like a camera. And they oh. take a Curlian uh, glass uh, image of him. They pull out this like glass out of it, and you can see that Valkos is like his face <laughs> is right there on it. And um, we'll let you go, but we're limiting your access to the city. My Please remain within access. the outer rings Can and I keep kind of- that ribbon on your person at all times. I look at him and I do I and is it just my access? You're right. No, wait. Let's ribbon all of these three. Before you even think of ribboning people, I would like to ask a question, if I may. Go ahead. You came over with us with purpose, and we complied. I ask again. Was there a problem or an issue that desired your time to spend with us as we showed you our That's none of your business. When you speak, you should have been spoken to before you open your mouth. And you do not question our methods. And you can see behind him, they're dragging off the guy that informed on you. (laughs) (laughs) No! No, you don't understand! I was trying to help! I mean, come on! I... I... (laughs) I will flash the badge of the spark rights and say, I require the access to be able to do my engineering work here in the Imperial City. Well, that's unfortunate. You'll have to talk to your guild representatives. And he uh, pins a yellow, uh, he pins a yellow ribbon on you. (laughs) And they take a... take glass uh, images of Juliet and Ekaprag, who also has a yellow ribbon pinned on him. Now, obviously, you can take the ribbon off easily, but, uh, you know, they have this image of you that uh, uh, apparently will somehow be passed around or <laughs> sent in different places. Who right. knows where, uh, how, how oh. it will be used. But, uh, they they recommend that you stay in uh, you can only you only have access to Grey Church, Vanderton, 
New Ferrick. These are all uh, these are all neighborhoods on the outer fringes. Sabura, like uh, you do not have okay. access to the inner rings of the city. They say, mm-hmm. and uh, so um, before, you are. Before we do that, I'm just gonna say, can I change my loadout to light? Because I actually I feel like if I am traveling with a little bag, it should be light. So I'm gonna make You've it. You've already light used one normal. item, and you want to go ahead and change it to yeah, light. Yeah, because I, I feel like making it normal feels like I don't want to be that kind of. I don't want to be that guy who's like, <laughs> I'm gonna pull a pistol out my ass. So I'm just gonna make it light because I, I have faith in myself. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No problem. Great. Thanks. <laughs> now here's the good news. So on your ribbon, it's actually listed the neighborhoods that you have access to. Okay. Uh, and um. Uh, here's the good news. When you get to the actual customs officers who are behind this, like, it looks like this, uh, these, these glass bubbles, uh, they never come out of them. Uh, and, uh, they have like places where you put your documents in and then the documents get, uh, when you get there, the Imperial military, uh, soldiers talk to them and you are sent through. So by just having being inspected by the Imperial military, you haven't you haven't had to go through customs inspectors looking closely at your documents. And soon you find yourselves inside the city. Let me describe it for you. Immediately, you see that uh, everyone in the city looks healthier, more beautiful than the corpse-like people of Duskfall. And uh, <laughs> you can definitely notice Duskfall natives kind of walking out of the train station among the people of the Imperial City because the Imperial City uh, citizens look much healthier and less poxed, less, less uh, uh, twisted as Duskfall residents. The streets are not at all crowded and there are white flowers everywhere, a profusion of white flowers and uh, everything is so bright and beautiful that it's as if the whole city were white crown as if the whole city were the neighborhood of brightstone in duskfall the other thing you notice is groups of five imperial military soldiers come marching by just uh kind of uh double stepping it down the street uh, and uh, keeping an eye on everybody walking about. You can see nobles and bureaucrats traveling in palanquins, or uh, you see a bureaucrat holding a, a, a handful of scrolls, and there are servants just holding the train of the bureaucrat's jacket as he hustles to a location somewhere near the Ministry of Preservation offices. But the main thing is that everything shines with the light of the artificial sun and all of you feel like, oh, blinded by it. And there's actually a man with a stall sitting right outside uh, the uh, the uh, train station. Sun goggles? Sun goggles? <laughs> Be able to see with sun goggles and you can see that he is not a, a normal native of the Imperial City. He, in fact, is wearing sun goggles himself. You do not have to interact with him if you don't want to. <laughs> you you are able to see. I'm not going to be like negative one dice because it's okay, bright. I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> I was just add, adding a little yeah, local yeah, yeah. color, but I did make that sound like it was a required encounter, didn't I? <laughs> I think um, he's going to send us on a side quest. Yeah. Right. I kind of hmm. look at the yellow tag. Can we take it off? Um, it's easily taken off. Does everyone have tags walking around? Yeah, a lot of them have green tags. The citizens of the city don't have any tags at all. Oh, okay. So I kind of, I mean, I look at everyone with the party and I look around to see that no one's fucking listening to us this time. And I'm like, <laughs> we should, we should find a way of maybe getting documents. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? When you mm-hmm. said that we went through our, uh, our uh, what's it called? Um, we went through, we didn't go through customs. We didn't have our body search, did we? Uh, no, you didn't. So I'm going to flashback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh and I'm going to flashback to a time where uh, I had, I was gathering information. 
try to find a bit more about the Imperial City. Uh, I had asked for um, essentially looking for uh, finding out ways of identification and how it works with the city. How does travel work? How do you go through? Do you need passes? Do you need this? Do you need that? <laughs> Which is why I came empty because I knew that if I came with anything, of course, they're going to check me as a Severosi and be like, oh, you're disgusting. But what I did get was fake almost documents or passes, for example, that would allow us to be to, to cross freely and see us as citizens of the Imperial City for each and okay. everyone here. And how I did that was obviously by finding someone who could do this for me and beating them to a pulp. How does that work? In Duskfall. Yeah, back in, in Duskfall. So back in Duskfall, you yeah. uh, beat someone... Uh, to, well, you threaten to beat <laughs> someone to a pulp in order to get documents that, what are the documents? What is everything that the, the docs essentially do? Like, so I would imagine that you took, you know, citizens here would citizenship, have like- Citizenship, yeah. Yeah, citizenship, yeah. Okay, so you want to be a full citizen. Yeah, I think we're all, I've got us all full citizen. Um, what action fake. did you use in this flashback? What action I, did you use to procure this? Uh, I probably- It sounds yeah, like as you're threatening, uh, it could be, well, you tell me. Probably I would have used, I'm going to argue that I used, yeah, I'm going to use command. Oh. Command. Okay. And I want to see how successful you were at this. Um, so go ahead and uh, give me uh, a command roll. And be because it's a flashback, let's just call it uh, risky for standard effect. Um, Can I push myself on, on this roll? <laughs> um... You know what? I think it's because it's a flashback. No. No. Okay. That's fine. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> a three. A three? Yeah. Okay. So because it's a flashback, you're going to pay stress to have this citizenship badge, right? Um, okay. I, I don't know exactly who you beat up, uh, but uh, you found somebody walking through Duskfall who had a very pink a healthy sunburned complexion uh, and uh, you uh, pulled them into a dark alley and you uh, roughed them up and you got uh, something out of their uh, their pockets that was kind of like a, an ID, ID uh, papers um, that said uh, citizen it looked like a little when you unfolded it it looked like a little certificate like you'd win um, if you uh, were in some sort of an award ceremony but it certifies that they are a citizen of the imperial city the problem with the three, well, maybe we'll get into that in a little bit. But right yeah, now, I was gonna, I was you gonna have say, it. Could I say, like, you know, because I've got three of them, right, for everyone here. Could I say, Oh, you like, got you got three of them? Well, I was going to say for everyone, but the point is, is that they are so, they're like, I didn't get it from one specific person or stole from them. I would say, like, I, they're fake. So if any, in close in inspection, obviously, they would be, they would almost feel like, ah, but... You know, if you flash them, it's like flashing your driver's license. You know, sometimes you could flash your driver's license and, you know, someone might not necessarily see if it's real or not. You know, when you get those dodgy, you know, when you get like, you get Absolutely. your friends to buy you drinks mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. stuff or whatever. So, I didn't realize they were fake. Um, so I thought that maybe you really got some off of it's someone. It's a three. So <laughs> just like. Right. Maybe you did get one real one and the other and two are four yeah, and other based two are on right. the yeah. real one. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Ross Bryant. What a great solution. Go ahead and take three stress for that Jesus wept. Hmm. god guys i'm i'm gonna be so great on this heist <laughs> and just so you know because your because your images were uh saved and because you uh had the yellow ribbons pinned on you regardless of the this uh brilliant strategy with the uh documents that you just procured with the flashback i have still created a six segment clock called intruder alert and uh, I have removed one segment from it. If all six segments disappear, then the Imperial military will be searching everywhere for you, trying to track you down and take you out. All right. <laughs> for just in, for having a, on a holiday, what kind of destination is this? Listen, it's a military state. It is a uh -huh. totalitarian city. They don't go with the loosey goosey 
morals and rules of Duskball here in the Imperial City. They have something to protect. This is the seat of the Empire. So, um, you were flagged as suspicious, and that makes one segment go off of the clock. Okay. Well, so, where's this clock? Um, it is, uh, do I have you on the I right page? I see intruder alert, yes. Oh, no. yes. I see okay. it. Okay. Keep an eye Please. on it. All right. Um, so, uh, you are in the uh, city, and you know that you have to find Fitz quickly. Right. Because the longer you dally, the more chance there is that your illegal presence here will be detected. So maybe um, let's find like antiquities and curio dealers mm. or a district where those folks are that where we can start putting it around that we've got something special. Either that or or like I said, or drug dealers, because I think they might be uh, easier to beat up and be in like shadier areas. Perhaps, yeah. Maybe versus we can high end that. antiquity dealers, you know. Let me ask sure. you this: when when Valkos hands you your citizenship papers, do you all remove the yellow ribbon? I, I'm gonna keep mine on until it's yeah. I'll keep mine on until until we're in a neighborhood. Movement. We need it to be somewhere else. Yeah, Understood. yellow ribbon still on for now. Yeah, same. Understood. No problem. Okay, so you were looking for, did you say antiquity de antiquities dealers or drug dealers? I like Josephine's idea. Maybe let's try to. Um, go with the the underground and right. I don't want to deal with among, super powerful people among the in this uh, town. among the psych drug dealers that there's that there's a very interesting object that's just come into town for the right price. Right, right. Uh, By the way, when they rifled your bag, Valcos, they did not mark the spirit bane charm. It is completely fine. You're allowed to have spirit bane charms in a city that doesn't want any ghosts in it. No problem. Brilliant. So um, it sounds like you're going to get in touch with the local underworld. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why don't you give me the action you're going to use to do that? And the threat is that if you fail, you will take more segments of the intruder alert clock because you've been asking questions that rouse suspicions. Right. And I also um, want you to describe to me what techniques or what avenues Juliet does to get in touch with these underworld elements. Oh, I'm doing it. Of course I am. Um, I... <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't have to be you. That can no, just I, be I kind of your that. next step and someone else can do it. I'll approach... Um, uh, it, there's got to be an apothecary place at some point. Yeah, Something you walk similar. for a while. Yeah, you walk for a while in the uh, neighborhood of Gray Church. Um, so named f because um, it, it is filled with places of worship, but they are all the official religion of the empire. They are all the church of ecstasy. You don't see other faiths like you might see in Duskfall. Uh, and uh, there are all these kind of holy uh, sites and places to pray. And one large, literally gray church dominating <laughs> the center of the neighborhood um, but you're searching for an apothecary, and I think that there is a, an apothecary along the main road that uh, travels through Gray Church toward Vanderton. And so as you travel along it, you find an apothecary, and um, you're looking for underworld elements, but you go into the apothecary shop, and a uh, woman who has her hair in a very tight ponytail and is wearing square glasses and uh, a tie and a suit approaches you and says, Yes. And I'll have pinned the uh, Spark Right badge on before entering. Yes, hello. I am here on business, uh, tending to some of the city's engineering needs, and uh, wanted to know what my options are in terms of um, supplies and passed by your establishment. You're looking for tonics, salves. Yes, catalysts, uh, catalysts yes, uh, but of course, sometimes there is a need for more um, nefarious powders. <laughs> nefarious powders? What action are you using? 
I use Sway. Okay. How many dots do you have in Sway? I actually have two dots, and I think I just forgot that Juliet had those at some point. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, Two dots. She's Um, very persuasive. I'm trying to see if I can uh, offer I mean, the I'll, I'll take bargain. any help. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that other people can help you here. It's okay. going to be maybe more suspicious of Valkos and Aquilia, Ac- both <laughs> barge in and are like going, yeah, she needs those. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you're making this deal on your own. You can push yourself to stress for an extra die. And I'm trying right. to think of a devil's bargain that I can offer you. And the devil's bargain uh, I will offer you is that devil's bargain I, I will offer you is they can put you in touch with, if you succeed, you can, you can be put in touch with the local underworld, whoever sells illicit goods here in the Imperial city. If you succeed, but if you fail, it's going to be, two segments on the intruder alert clock and even if you succeed it's one segment on the intruder alert clock that's the devil's bargain shall i take it friends i feel this affects us all well wait so hold on so (laughs) if she even if she succeeds it'll go by one yeah but we are we are closer to we'll have a contact yeah Mm -hmm. the underground yeah however this devil's bargain will just give you an extra die, but if you succeed already with the two die, with the two dots that you have, surely you won't take a segment off the intruder alert and still succeed. Oh yeah, if I don't take the devil's bargain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'll just push myself. I won't take the devil's bargain. Okay. It's, it wasn't a great bargain. Bargain right. was the Red wrong bargain. word for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's my position here? Your Your position you. is risky. Yeah. And uh, your position is risky, and um, I think you're going to have limited effect no matter what, and here's why. I think that you walked into the first apothecary you could find, (laughs) and you're asking for nefarious chemicals. There's a great chance that she doesn't trust you. I'd say there's an excellent chance. But if you really succeed here, she might point you in the direction. Can I... uh use any of my like show off any of my fine tinkering tools or something just to to like help get this effect to normal to to justify my needs as a I, as a an a to improve your as effect a, yeah no but you can use that push you're giving yourself to improve it to standard oh. and only roll two dice Yeah, let's do standard. Go for it. I'll use that push for the effect. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Two little dice. Let's go. Two dice. Here we go. Here we go. Fuck. <laughs> a three <laughs> and a two. Oh Failure. Oh my god. Oh my uh, god. Oh my god. All right. Uh, she says, uh, there are no nefarious chemicals in the Imperial City yellow. And we don't serve yellows here. Please leave my shop. Out. Turn around and leave. Look, well, at least we know. Two segments go off of the intruder alert clock. Wait, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. on. We can resist. Let us resist. That's true. Resist the consequence. (laughs) Good idea. I'm so stress already. (laughs) I think this is a... I'll resist. This feels so... F- okay, but I should have just taken the devil's bargain then if we were going to have the same exact results. Well, not actually, taking it. to be honest, we, we probably could have won it, Cause, but it's it's fine. It's Because then I could have had an extra die if the same thing would have happened even without taking the devil's bargain, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how all of that math works out, but it doesn't work out on your side. It's time to resist. And I think you can use insight because I think that maybe, you know, you were able to kind of, if you resist correctly, you're able to handle this woman because you understand her a little bit better. You know, you understand her personality. Um, you get a read on her and you're able to because, handle her. Wait, Jared, because you told me if I failed the, with the devil's bargain, it would have been two segments off the clock. And now I failed without the devil's bargain. It was still two so seconds. Here, the, the devil's clock, bargain right? was, even if you succeed, one segment is removed. That was the devil's bargain. But I made sure to let you know what the threat oh. was. 
If you fail, two segments are removed. Totally misunderstood. No <laughs> Thought problem. Thought it was only with the devil's bargain. No problem. Um, probably should have taken it, guys. <laughs> Here you we go. I'm removing it's okay. two segments. It's okay. Okay, so like you're like in how do I country and you just uh, wait? How do I resist? Um, you resist by uh, choosing. Uh, you're going to roll your insight, I think, to resist. Insight. This. Okay. How many dots do you have in insight? That vertical line under insight. I have three dots in insight. Oh wow! Great. Okay, you're going to roll uh, those dice. You take six stress to resist. Minus your highest die from this insight roll. Yep, here we go. Here we go. Oh my god, okay. Your highest die from this insight guys. roll is it's, a three. So you take not three stress. Good. Guys, I if I take one more stress in this entire score, I'll have a trauma. So that's <laughs> and, Oh my and god. You filled up your stress meter already? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, because pushing pushing myself was too stress, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, no, this I'm, was I'm... a disastrous. Yeah. You know, we really interaction tried to with be... an apothecary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, this is we the tried worst to be interaction. Really cool on I've this ever had. whole thing, and now look at us. We should have gone in guns blazing. We should have assaulted the city. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course, like, that's what Valkos uh, right. advises. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, so here Listen, we are. Listen, I just want to. I just, let me just set the. Let me just set the, the. What what has happened here? Because you resisted, mm. she does not. Um, she does not inform. Right. Inform on you. Uh, which means, I'll knock back that clock to just taking away one segment. Okay. Okay. She just tells you to get out. She doesn't actually inform on you. Okay. And I walk out clearly frazzled, stressed, one might say. Uh-huh. Say, I hate this city. There is no there's no respect for any sort of science. Everything is, is on a leash. Oh! Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, a procession for some sort of noble or high-ranking bureaucrat comes through. They're pushing uh, the bureaucrat woman on a wheeled kind of platform, and they are h- blowing bugles in your face to get out of the way. Okay, we dive out of the get way. Out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they move by slowly. Mm-hmm. And everybody that looks like a citizen doesn't act like this is strange or incredible at all. They just keep moving. Eka Prag, you you will have to use your your whatever ways that you've charmed us before because I'm useless. Oh, don't say that, darling. Um, thank you. Just run up against a brick wall. Just gonna have to find a find a place where there's a few chinks we can get our picks in, eh? Um, so we're in a military town, so. There, there must be some sort of like, uh, um, for, there, there's, there's a sex work underground here. There's got to be. Um, we always uh, go uh, back. To- <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm not okay. trying to be a perv. It's just like it's a, it's another, another way into like yeah. the, the vice culture of the city. Um, hey, it's what we know. And uh, so. Um, if we can find that avenue, that's those. Those are the sorts of places where, where lotioned, disreputable things are indulged. Uh, so might might there be one in these suburbs where yellows are allowed? Um, how are you going to find out? How Seems, are you going to? Yeah. Right. So I think uh, it seems like the kind of thing where consort might come in handy for Eka, old Eka Prague if you could it does uh, are you going to stay in this neighborhood Gray Church which is attached to the train station or are you going to move no. into a different neighborhood no I want to go to a significantly less pious neighborhood <laughs> um, very good um, you soon find yourself in a neighborhood uh, called uh, well you can choose there's a neighborhood called the Canyon and the Canyon um, is literally a canyon but um, you know buildings have been built into the side of it right okay. or you can head you can head uh, more westerly toward a neighborhood called Vanderton which uh, is right beside Gray Church over a little bridge and it looks more middle class 
Okay. Um, uh, more residential. Let's go to the canyon. Ray Church. Let's go to yeah. the canyon. The canyon. Yeah. So now you're walking along the bottom of the canyon, and you can see uh, all of the uh, shops are kind of hanging off the sides of the very narrow canyon, and uh, there are steps and ladders to get up to them. And uh, you are going to use consort. Is that correct? That's right. Tell me exactly how you're using it. Who are you talking to? Where are you going? Let's. I want to find um, a uh, a legitimate establishment of entertainment, like a like a bar or a um, yeah a tavern, a someplace like that where where I notice um, people are slumming. So like off duty military folks the type of guy that we saw um, having his tails held up like a bureaucrat where do those where do those um it's like where the where the manhattan finance bros when they go into the outer boroughs to like <laughs> blow their wad like where of of cash where's where's that here Interesting. In, in the canyon i think that looking around the canyon you finally do uh find um like a, a row of like shops uh, that seem like they cater to uh, food and drink. And you do see Imperial military types. Um, they're still in their segmented armor, but they have their helms off and you don't see their weaponry anywhere. So they're just wearing their armor and they're uh, chatting casually and they're walking into a uh, they're walking into a place uh, called the Edelberry. Great. So I would like to go to the Edelberry and um, get the vibe here. So behind the bar in the Edelberry, you see an enormous painted portrait of a crowned man with a, <laughs> a very sallow complexion and a very severe goatee. Uh, and there's just like beams of light painted coming out of uh, this person. And this can only be a painting that is memorializing and honoring the immortal emperor. Mm. <laughs> there is uh, music being played on an automated device. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like old west, like da, 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 da. it's more like uh, classical, like they're playing Brahms. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, <laughs> uh, everybody is sipping uh, liquor out of tiny glasses and they all look up at you when you enter. Okay, making a scene. Um, so great. I'll, I will get a table and uh, I'd like to just, uh, this is not Ekaprag's best thing, but I want to survey and, and take in this scene and, and just like with the, the knowledge that Ekaprag knows of how these underworld things work, like... Is are there people coming up to the off-duty military folks or these these officials and striking up conversations, maybe enticing them to go to a second location? Are there people like asking to get drinks bought for them? Is there someone operating vice in this legitimate business, like kind of under the table? Um, that's what I want. To, I want. I want to see. I want to see. This, these are the sorts of places where the underworld and the legitimate world intersect, and I want to find that point. So earlier you said you were going to consort, but now you say you're going to survey. Oh, but I guess the, the survey was just to find the person to talk to. So I can just do that. Um, I talk to a, a, a... You want to just consort? Yeah, let's just do that instead. So um, I, so instead of that, I approach the drunkest people I see and sit down with them. Uh, very good. Um, and uh, the drunkest people happen to be a couple off-duty Imperial military types. And uh, they are um, uh, quite drunk, but you can see that they are keeping their behavior subtle, right? So they are laughing together, but they're not like, ah, ha, ha. They're like, <laughs> my flag, the yellow flag, by the way, came off before I came in here. Um, yeah, same. Oh, okay. Very the good. Yellow flags off. They did not serve us well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, do you sit down with them or do you just, what are you saying to them? Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, I'm not here, by the way. I'm by the bar, probably at the bar. Just I don't want yeah, to interfere or, you know, get involved. Yeah, um, we'll be nearby, but not, yeah, cramping Eka Prags. An ambiguous, right. an ambiguous uh, figure is uh, operating the bar. They uh, have um, very severe 
uh, outfit and uh, hairstyle cut in like a perfect bowl uh, around the top of their head, almost like a tonsure. Uh, <laughs> and they say, uh, praise and honor the emperor. What will you have? To Valkos. Do you have some aquavite? Aquavite. Absolutely. And uh, this uh, bartender turns to an enormous wall of spouts <laughs> and uh, uh, turns uh, a spigot on one of them and pours a little aqua vitae into a tiny glass and shoves it toward you. Wow. It actually looks clear. <laughs> yeah, in so Dust Bowl, it would be all milky <laughs> with like yeah. stuff floating in it. <laughs> uh, so let's turn back to Ekaprag. Uh, how do you consort with these guys? Just let me know a little bit about how you approach or how you talk to them. Um, it's it's like uh, the ingratiating, like you do so much for the city. Uh, like it's so it's so lovely to see um, people who've sacrificed so much in their in the, their time and their in their efforts and their youth to um, protecting all of us and our emperor most of all another you're round. welcome citizen you're welcome it's our it's our duty and our honor god mm -hmm. and, it, and it must be hard and and like after maybe a rapport has gone by like it must be so hard to to um so many people outside of these walls are such beasts uh, and we ourselves are like little little states aren't we building up our walls against the forces that would try to tear us down <laughs> they look a little confused hmm? um, you may be you may be uh, smarter than they are <laughs> <laughs> um and i'm and i'm like just like uh like and you work so hard you must play twice as hard <laughs> roll your consort yeah and the threat here is that you are of course looking for information from two members of the imperial military but yeah. i made a point to go for people who are intoxicated in the church. <laughs> this is true yeah. this yeah. is true and that's why i will allow you to have this at a controlled oh. uh, position okay controlled great. uh for standard effect if you if you succeed they will let you know something okay Oh no! Oh, what is what happening? Is All today? of our rules are falling apart. I rolled a one and a two. On today, what is happening? Uh, they kick back their chairs and go, "What are you insinuating?" Nothing at all. Only that your jobs are very difficult. Yeah, it's difficult when we have to deal with riffraff like you. How dare you question our purity? And one of them grabs you by the collar, uh, and the bartender goes. Here now, what's happening here? And one of the military men goes and, and says, this citizen is having impure thoughts. Impure the bartender thoughts. says, very well, deal with him. Great. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh. soldier uh, pulls back his fist to uh, smash you in the face, Ekaprag. Oh, Ekphelia. no. Cool. What do Hold you on. do? Come on, Bump. Let's see what you got. Vamp. I mean, in public here. Yeah. Um, okay, great. That rocks. Um, I mean, I guess I'll, I mean, I'll just resist this, but uh, uh, you'll resist. Well, you have to, no. you have to wait until you fail to resist. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, okay. Well, well, how about this? How about this then? Um, they're, they've oh, taken... wait, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can resist this. I apologize. I won't. Okay. Sort I won't. failed and you may resist it if you wish. I won't. What I want to do is actually try to turn this to an advantage, even though this might up the wanted nature of us. I will use vampy stuff. I touched well, a nerve. Ekaprag knows he touched a nerve. He's saying they have impure pure thoughts. No one would be this, this, um, this, um, outraged unless they had impure thoughts unless they were protecting themselves. It is the most debauched to put on the, the most well, the most um, well-crafted mask of piety. And so yeah, I am going to re there. reach out with my arcane sight and see into this person's mind what he is so, uh, what he's trying to protect. I want him to tell me 
I want to listen to what he's really saying um, so that he tells me what I want to know. Uh, um, when, when, I, when he clocked me as, a, as, a, as an unsavory character, what did he connect me to, you know? Mm. Does oh, that make so sense? You are able to reach out into their mind? Savory. The text of this ability, this vampire ability, arcane sight, take one stress to sense beyond human limits, hear a subject's true thoughts or feelings. See in Done. pitch darkness, sense That's the presence so of invisible nuts. things. That's, That's fantastic. fantastic. That is so, fantastic. Um, you yeah. listen to this man's thoughts and he's like, they can't know. They mustn't know. They can't know. They mustn't know what happens at the P&D clinic on, uh, and then it, it lists off a, uh, a, a street number. Great. Um, and then I brace myself for that punch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the punch smashes you in the face. Um, I think that you uh, fall to the ground uh, from the force of it. Um, uh, but it doesn't, I don't think, I don't think you can easily be bloodied. Mm-hmm. Ecphilia. I think that, uh, you, you know, there's not a lot of blood near the surface, right? right. Uh, <laughs> so um, they smash you to the ground and they say, let that be a lesson to you. Impure thoughts can get you badly hurt. Yes, of course. Now get um, out of this establishment that honors the emperor. I'm going to hurry over to Ophelia and help, help them up. Thank you, officer. I will look to my prayers. And, um, like, uh, scuttle out of the, out of the building. And what you guys know is that the Church of Ecstasy is a church that is, uh, the official church of the empire. Um, and in, in the Imperial city, the way that they get out all these unnatural urges is they go to the church of ecstasy and they have these sort of ecstatic rituals, uh, that even like kind of worship demons in order to get some of their, uh, you know, repressed feelings out. But that's not what this soldier said to you. They, they mentioned the P and D clinic on, yeah, on, on, uh, roundabout street. Love it. Um, so I, I, so if uh, Juliet is like helping, Ekapreg is limping, limping. Oh, yeah. Oh, and as soon as they're out the door, it's just like, the P&D clinic on Roundabout Street is where something a little bit naughty is going on. So perhaps we just pay them a visit. Hmm? How do you know this? And are you all right? You. It's nothing, uh, oh, don't worry, my darling. Um, I'll, uh, maybe just a little out of joint. And you can see, like, massaging Ekaprag's cheek, some of the m- makeup is, like, crusting away, and you're just, like, veins. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Juliet, like, touches and caresses the face, and is there any sort of, like, insight I can do right now with my physical ability Right, that allows no, where I know like bones, blood, you know, bodily, right? I've got this physical ability of just what's happening or just knowing that something, a little more insight into how off this is. Yes, I think that you, um, I think because you have physical, you immediately notice that Ekphelia is hiding something strange about their physiology. I also yeah. want to do this. I think that you can choose right now. Would you like to take a level one harm, Ekphelia, or mm-hmm. would you like to uh, tick a segment on the intruder alert clock? I'll take a harm. Very good. Take a level one harm, and uh, we'll call it, uh, because you are a vampire, you don't have a bruise, you have, uh, let's call it damaged jaw. Great. And I think that it doesn't hurt you physically, like physical actions won't have any problem, but because your makeup has been kind of wiped mm-hmm. away and it's it, and it's making you talk a little funny, it's like they, they kind of unhinge something in there. Uh-huh. Maybe social encounters will be a little bit affected by this. It almost looks slightly palsied, like it's a little off center. No, don't worry, my love. Very good. So, uh, Valkos, are you still in the Adelberry? I've left like two minutes, not even two minutes, sorry, like a beat after uh, they left, not to kind of, again, draw attention, because I feel like 
Severosi are not necessarily lovely people or my or, or welcomed people in this city. So I kind of began just to keep keep the temperature low. I leave after they leave, <laughs> and then leave. Yeah. Soon you find yourselves, unless you want to stop me, on Roundabout Street, which is, of course, a roundabout. Um, and you can see that it is where <laughs> a heavy traffic of carriages and palanquins and bicycles and uh, electroplasm-fueled vehicles kind of um, the traffic moves and then goes off in different spokes of the roundabout. Uh, And here amid uh, a place where there is more fumes, it's not quite as beautiful as some other areas of the Imperial City, tucked away against the roundabout, you see something that says Purity and Discipline Clinic. (laughs) Hello, hello. This is, uh, this is the place. This may be our entry into, uh, a darker world than this sunlit city, uh, wishes to admit it has, darling. Are you going in? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And as the three of you enter, the door shuts behind you. And that is where we will end for today. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, this is epic. This it is epic. Oh man, I'm how are we gonna get three episodes more? Yeah, how Honestly. are we gonna survive? I no have idea. no stress left. You have no stress left. I mean, uh, you know, during the break, Josephine might have to create a replacement character. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Serious man, I'm terrified of doing anything. Like normally I'd be like, yeah, and then I'm gonna like yes. bust in yeah. there and break their face, and I'm like, I'm not doing. I'm I'm a good boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are gonna be so much... happy to get back to Dust Bowl, <laughs> where there right. are no rules. You very much set the stage of like, oh god, we are nothing here. <laughs> Telling you. I can't yeah. believe I said I wanted to see the site. I panicked. That's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss home. Well, we will explore more of the Imperial City and uh, be good little boys and girls uh, when we come back in a week's time. Until then, uh, happy heists and scores, everybody. We'll see you next time. Oh.